Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am going to be doing a review of the two newest Vizier palettes. I'm so excited. So we have the Kashmiri palette and the Bijouette palette. I picked up both of these from the Vizier Art website. However, since these have launched, they have expanded to other retailers as well. So right now, both of these are available at the Vizier Art website, News Beauty Pro, and Beautylish as well. So whatever your preferred retailer of choice is, I will have them all linked down below for you. So both of these are going to be $44 each. I will say Use Beauty Pro always has different bundle deals. So take a look at those first. I checked today. It looks like the bundle deal of the two palettes is gone, but they still offer different brush sets with the palettes. Just take a look. <laughs> No, I'm really excited for these because the last couple palettes from Viseart I haven't been as excited about but when these two launched I knew I had to have them in my hands ASAP. I thought they were beautiful. They fulfilled a need that I'd been wanting from Busy Arts to come out with. We have a fun, colorful palette, which isn't something that they've done in a while. They've been sticking to more neutrals with some pops, so I'm excited to see basically a full, colorful palette. And then they also have fulfilled my personal need for a more cool-toned, kind of neutral-ish palette. I mean, if you're at all familiar with my channel and the colors that I like, this is an ideal, everyday color story for me. <laughs> so both of these are in the Itunzu series. So what that means is they are inspired by previously archived Viseart color stories. They're updated, they're more modern, and I love the Itunzu series because I feel like they are more fit for consumers. If you don't know, I'm a bridal makeup artist and I use the Viseart products in my kit because I love the quality and I love how functional the packaging is, but it's not always the cutest and in the majority of their line, the palettes are organized by finish, but the Eaton Zoos are great because they have all of the finishes in one palette and it's just more consumer friendly, you know? So if you are looking to purchase into Vizzy Art, these style of palettes I think are really great. They're very small, compact. You get a lot of product for a really great price because Vizzy Art can be more on the pricey side and it's a great way to experiment with the formulas. So I'm excited they chose the Eaton Du style to come out with and the color stories are so exciting to me. Now from what I am seeing online, they are not indicating that this is limited edition, but you know in the makeup world, that's subject to change. Seems like it might be permanent in their Eat and Do line. And I'm just really excited for these. So I'm gonna have timestamps for each palette. It's gonna almost be like two separate reviews if there's only one palette that you're looking into or if you're looking into both. If I talk about both, watch the whole thing, that would be lovely. Anyways, let's get into the Kashmiri palette. Okay, so the first palette that we are going to get into is the Kashmiri palette. So here is what the box is going to look like that it comes in. If you need to take a closer look at the ingredients, they will be right here for you to pause on. Now you can see that these shadows are made in the USA and something that really impresses me about Viseart is they have a 36 month shelf life. These last probably two to three times longer than most of the eyeshadows on the market. That's another thing that I love about Viseart. Not that I pay too much attention to the shelf life. I take care of my shadows, I clean my brushes. Powders typically last a longer time. They don't harbor bacteria like a cream product might. It's nice to know it has a longer shelf life if that's something that you pay attention to. Here is what the outer packaging looks like. I love that with this Eton Du series of late that Viseart has taken to given the packaging a little bit of a design. I think the design adds so much character to the product because Viseart is not known for packaging. They are a pro brand. It's not about the packaging. It's about how it functions. So they've kept the plain packaging style, but adding these designs I feel like has made a huge difference as somebody who is both a pro and just a regular consumer, I really appreciate what they did here. It's equally as functional and is just adorable. So let's take a closer look at the inside. If you're not familiar with this style of packaging, it opens up like this and you can use it almost as an easel. So this is one of the ways that you can have it open. You can also have it laying out flat. I really just love this style of packaging and then you have a nice big mirror. Here are what the 16 shades are going to look like. Now if you aren't familiar with the Eaton Du series, I love that Vizier is doing this and I wish more brands would do this. They're taking their archived palettes and updating them or taking inspiration from them. So this one 
is inspired by the Cashmere Theory palette, which is a 6 Pam palette. And I can definitely see the relation, but this one definitely looks like a more refreshed take to it. Obviously, there's a lot more shades to it. So I saw this. This looks like the palette for me. This leans quite cool. It has some nice lilac-y mauve shades that I'm really excited about. Taking a look at the palette, it looks like we have eight satin and shimmer shadows, then four matte shades. We'll get into swatching them and take a closer look at the finishes. So we're going to start off with the top row here. The shade names can be found on the Visi Art website. Oh, by the way, something I forgot to mention about the packaging, because Visi Art is a pro brand, you can easily take each of the shadows out and put them into a Z palette, a magnetic palette, or you can also rearrange these with their other palettes that are this size. So any palette in the Itunzu series is going to be the same size. So it's very easy to mix and match. For example, I use the Grande Pro 1X palette, which is the same size as these pans. I could easily take out the shades that I don't use and put my favorite shades from here in there. So that's also really great how versatile the palette is, especially if you're very into mixing and matching your shades and perfect for travel to really curate your old palette. Okay. <laughs> I forgot to mention that. I really wanted to. Back to the swatches. So we have Bubbles, Laughter, and Feather. Oh my gosh, yes. So we have a Pinky Lilac Champagne. This is a Satin Metallic according to their website. Then we have a Nude Beige Satin Metallic with a Shimmer Finish. And then we have a Pure Vanilla with a Matte Finish. So these are the first three shades. Let's take Pearls, Burlesque, and Flapper. We have a blushed tan with a satin metallic shimmer finish. Then we have a metallic satin caramel hue. This one I'm not getting as much pigmentation from, so I'm going to dip in again. Has a duochrome finish to it. And lastly, we have a dusty plum mid-tone with a matte finish. I'm not seeing too much of the duochrome that they're talking about with the shade Burlesque, and it does have a little bit more glitters than the rest of the shades. I feel like this could be maybe like a lid topper kind of formula. Let's do Bootlegger, Jazz, Roaring. Oof. This one swatched really good. A sienna mid-tone brown with a matte finish, a light rose gold with a duochromatic finish, and then a metallic, ugh, deep burgundy with a duochromatic finish. Now they're talking about these duochromatic finishes. It's not going to be anything quite like the duochromes that we're typically used to seeing, especially within the indie brand kind of category. Um, I wouldn't necessarily call these duochromatic at all. I'm looking for a shift. I don't see any. But I do notice the shades that they label as duochromatic are a little bit more sparkly and have a little bit more oomph than their regular shimmer formula. Final three shades, we have 20s, Retro, and Cigar. You can definitely guess by these names that this is based on a certain era in time. So we have a pale lilac with a satin metallic finish, really soft and pretty. Then we have a pewter with a satin metallic finish. Their satin metallic finishes in this palette seem a little bit extra more glam and creamy than some of their other metallics in past palettes. This is their really good metallic formula that I love. This is one of my favorite because I feel like sometimes their metallics aren't giving me the creaminess and the shininess that I like. These are. And then finally we have a deep espresso brown with a matte finish. So that's what's going to give you the depth in the palette. And here are the swatches of the 12 shades. I think everything swatched really beautifully in this palette and you can definitely see there is a color story here that's going to be very monochromatic and easy to create looks with. I'm very very happy with these swatches. I feel like everything is true to the Visi Art quality and if you aren't familiar with Visi Art, for me their mattes are some of the best on the market. I use their mattes in my bridal makeup kits because the shadows aren't overly pigmented. They're very very easy to use. They have the perfect level of pigmentation and the perfect level of blendability. It's not going to be like the trendy matte eyeshadows that have too much pigment. They are on not the softer side. They're quite pigmented, but they're not overbearing on the face and they're just an easy to blend, easy to use formula. And sometimes I feel like their satins and their shimmers can fall a little lackluster. In this palette, they have their really good metallic formula that I love. So I'm going to do this eye. 
and then I'll be back with the tutorial for you. Okay, so here's the look that we are doing. I wanted to put a lot of the shimmers on my eyes so I could see if they really differ from one another or if there are too redundant of shades. So to start off, I'm using my Tom Ford number 11 brush and then we're going into the matte bone shade. And I love that they have this shade in here. This palette overall has a really great selection of shades just to complete a look. They have shades for every depth. They have different different textures and different depths. So it really is an all-in-one inclusive kind of palette. Next we're going into this mauve shade right here. I'm using a Kaleidos crease brush. I'm going to pat it in the outer corner and I want you to see this level of pigmentation. You see it has really good pigmentation. It's not too much but it still gives you that oomph and then you can see because of the Visi Art formula. It just blends out so easily. Even if you place it down, all of the edges are going to blend out. So I'm just putting this in my crease, running it through. I'm gonna use the tip of this brush and I wanna run it underneath my lash line as well. I know this is a fluffy brush, so be careful with this step, but just to add that definition there as well. So this is the color that we want to peek through underneath the look. With a refer number 14 brush, we're going to go into the, this shade right here. This shade is gonna be so so valuable in this palette because it packs a lot of depth. So I'm starting by placing it along the outer half of my upper lash line and then we're just going to blend it out and then kind of create a V shape. I'm actually going to go in with just a little bit more color and I don't want to over blend this but I just want to add some depth all along the crease. I am going for a semi-dramatic eye but you'll see here I want that dark haze over the entire crease just like that so that the shimmers on the lid pop more. I'm taking a pencil brush and I'm running this dark shade along the lower lash line, pressing it pretty close to my lower lashes. So this is working as more of a liner as opposed to a shadow, so keep it close to the lash line. All right, it's time to play with the shimmers. So we're starting off with the lightest lilac shade right here. This is a Coastal Sense brush, RIP, and I'm going to put this in the inner corner and then I will blend it in just a little bit, but nothing crazy. I'm just going to use the same brush. And this shade seemed a little redundant to me to have both of these so I wanted to put them next to each other so you could see the difference and this has a different tone you know they have a si similar level of brightness but this one is a little bit more deep and gray so there is a difference between the two so I was very happy about that that they didn't look exactly the same taking another shader brush we're going into this pewter shade right here which these as a quad would create such a beautiful everyday look if you're into more brown tones. I of course had to go more into the lilac y mauve tones and this is gonna bleed into the darker shade. Finally with an Isom V27 we're going to take the shimmery mauve shade. Pretty predictable but we're just gonna pop it in the outer corner right here and do you see how you can see pretty much all four shades of the shimmers? That means it's pretty good quality. In other eyeshadow brands if the quality isn't as good all four of these shades would kind of look like the same color. This eye is looking better than this eye, honestly. I'm going to blend out the crease a little bit more. So something that I noticed while I was using this palette is how easy this is going to be to create looks. If you just cover this side of the palette, you have mauve looks. And if you cover this side of the palette, you have more almost warmer tones, leaning a little bit more neutral, but pinky tones, brown tones. So it's very intuitive to use. I love the layout here. I think they did a great job. Okay, so for some final touches, I'm gonna go back into the darkest shade and I'm going to wing it out just a little bit. So I'm starting from the end of my outer corner and winging it up. I'm also taking a little bit of that through the top of the crease to add some definition. Nothing too crazy. I don't want it to be too sharp, but just to add that extra layer of depth. And I'm even gonna take my blending brush and blend that. I'm going to take the lightest shimmer that we used and run this very close to the lash line. I'm not going too low, but I want this to brighten the inner half of the lower lash line. And then we're going into the mauve shimmery shade right here. And I'm keeping this in the center, but I like adding the shimmer 
colors down here because it keeps a glow to the eye and it's going to brighten everything up. I will be back to show you what my final look with the Kashmiri palette. All right, so here is the final look with lashes. I didn't even put on any eyeliner. I just wanted the look to speak for itself. I really love this look and I feel like I could create a lot more looks with this. I do think, much like the Natasha Denona Glam palette, that you aren't going to be able to get a billion looks with this palette just because it is more of a monochromatic palette, but you definitely can get a variety of different looks within this color story. You know, the cool toned, mauve brownish kind of palette. But for me, for every day, this is right up my alley. This is the kind of color story that I really enjoy. The quality on here is really great. So if this is a color story that you're interested in, I think you will like this. Now, it did remind me, as I just mentioned previously, of the Natasha Denona Glam palette. So I wanted to do a little bit of a comparison for you. I also heard from a couple of you that this reminded you of the Glam palette as well. So it wasn't just me. And you guys know, Glam palette's one of my favorites. But honestly, they really aren't the same at all, to be honest. When I look at them at quick glance, they are both more cool toned, neutral palettes. However, this palette right here, it just leans so much more purple. There's no traces of purple in the glam palette at all. And even within the more neutral shades in the Busy Art palette, I couldn't find too much. Let me show you. I struggled to actually find similar shades. So this top row right now is the Busy Art palette. The bottom is what I could find that was similar from the glam palette. Palette, but it really was a struggle and a number of these shades aren't the same like the only true close colors is going to be the matte shade at the end uh, but the rest they're just different you know maybe like the matte bone shade but those are shades that are necessary in almost every palette so yeah these aren't that similar and I was honestly surprised by that I thought they were going to be quite close and have a number of close shades but they are two different stories so if you have the glam and you like the glam I actually think that you would like the cashmere and they'd be a great companion with one another because the cashmere fulfills different areas of the more cool tone neutral color story. Those mauve tones just aren't in the glam palette. Big fan of this one. On a scale of everyday palettes, this one actually might be one of my all-time favorites from Vizier. I can see it becoming one of my most used. It's so good, you guys. Let's move on to the bijouette. All right, let's get into the palette that I'm the most excited for. I was super excited for the Kajmiri because it's right up my alley for every day, but what my heart has been desiring from Vizier is colorful shadows because they do color so well but that is far and few between because they do launch colors that make sense that people actually wear but when they come out with a colorful palette I'm always so excited so I was really excited for this one so this is the bijouette Itonzu palette here's what the box is going to look like something that I noticed on the Beautylish website is they said that these palettes were made in France but the box says here it's made in the USA so just keep that in mind if you're reading off of the Beautylish website and this also has a 36 month shelf life everything is pretty much the same minus the colors the outer packaging you guys oh my gosh I am obsessed with this this one is definitely my favorite outer packaging of the two how beautiful is this so this this is supposed to bring carefree sensuous of the 20s so we have a nice jewel toned palette here I mean now just so you know the pictures that I saw online I thought that this was gonna be a little bit more bright the hues on this are deeper like I think that this is going to be a beautiful fall tone palette I think this is gonna be beautiful on rich skin tones this palette is just it's not bright and poppy and vibrant like I thought it was gonna be don't get me wrong those shades are still quite vibrant but but the overall depth of this palette and the hues, it's just deeper than I thought it was going to be in person. <sighs> this is going to be a gorgeous, rich fall palette. I'm so excited to dig into this one. Let's just get straight to swatching. So we have Novu, sorry if I mispronounced that, Ruby, and Carnelian. This has seven shimmers, by the way, and it looks like four true mattes and then one matte with some glitters in there. So this is a base or mid-tone beige hue with a matte finish. Then we have a warm wine tone with a matte finish. And then a demi-matte mid-tone pumpkin orange with flecks of reflex 
reflectivity. I would say based on the swatching, the shimmers kind of disappeared. You can slightly see it as you turn my hand, but it's mostly a matte shade. And something that I forgot to mention with the Kashmiri palette, Viseart shadows don't really swatch that well. I wouldn't go off their swatches. The way that they apply, it's magic. But the swatches would lead you to think that the palette itself is questionable. I promise you on the eyes, it's always amazing. All right, let's do Scandalous. Speak easy. This one's a little bit more powdery, so I'm being careful. And then prohibition. Oh my god, these look so pretty. So we have a teal metallic duochrome again. Maybe like a slight green shift, but not really. I wouldn't necessarily consider this a duochrome. Then we have a burnt chocolate with a matte finish, beautiful, and an antique gold with a demi duochrome metallic finish. Sidecar sequins deco. Ooh, this deco shade. Yes. So we have a warm toffee mid-tone with a matte finish then a mid-tone golden amber with a metallic finish and then a raspberry with a metallic finish this one's not swatching quite as well as the others so we'll see this last row here i'm dying for so we have cubism jade and velveteen <sighs> Oh, we're gonna have fun with that. This is a sapphire blue with a demi duochromatic metallic finish, a majestic green with a metallic finish, and then a mid-tone purple with a demi duochrome metallic finish. Let me add a little bit more of the green. There we go. So here are the swatches of the Bijouette palette. Jewel tone heaven right here. I'm really, really excited for this one. So considering that this is a colorful palette, everything swatched pretty well. The shadow maybe didn't have the most pigmentation, but I'm quite optimistic about how these are going to apply. So I'm gonna do this eye and then I'll be right back. Okay, I mean, as you can see, I went all out with this palette. Keep in mind for my tutorials for reviews, I try and put as many colors on my eyelids as I can, but I would say traditionally, if I was just casually wearing this, I probably would stick to like one to two different colors <laughs> as opposed to like five, but this is fun. So if then ESM S33, we're going to take the matte shade right here that's orange like i said this does have those shimmers but honestly kind of just blend away end of the day it just ends up looking more matte so i'm just putting this on the inner half of my crease I'm just gonna softly blend it we'll probably come back to this color but right now i just want this warm hue out here so now with my kaleidos brush i'm going into the red shade and this blends out to be a little bit more raspberry i would say honestly between these two shades because of the way that I'm applying them and really only softly there's not gonna be too much difference between these two shades but I'm impressed with how these blended out because both of these are a little bit more difficult to formulate particularly this raspberry shade can go very wrong very quickly but I'm just using these as an outer haze to the lid colors which you can see are main part of the show the warmth is only just going to peek through we're gonna start off with this gold shade right here and I'm gonna apply this to the inner corner and just fill in just a tiny little bit on the lid not too much I'm gonna clean off that brush next we're going to go into this shade right here it's kind of like a turquoise blue green shade and when we mix this in with the gold it's gonna create something a little bit more green so where the eyelid is clean it's gonna look more blue and then when we mix it in with the gold it's gonna become a little bit more green so make sure these two colors are intermingling so that way we can get a cohesive well blended look and don't worry too much about the top here we will be blending later I'm actually gonna take some more of the gold to make sure this blend looks really good so go back and forth between the green and the gold next I'm just gonna take my finger and go into the blue shade this is gonna be really the star of the show I mean I know this is quite a crazy look but I want this blue front and center because it is gorgeous it is so pigmented you see that okay next we're going to dive into this purple purple shade right here which looks scary and glittery but look how beautiful that is super pretty i'm going to take a clean blending brush now and be very careful don't 
do huge windshield wiper motions. Let's start with the blue and purple, kind of blend out those edges, wipe your brush off, so that way we can keep them from getting muddy. Then we're going into the green and yellow side. So I'm just softening these edges, and if anything, honestly, just take your finger, kind of blend the shades up, and that's going to work as well. All right, let's move on to the lower lash line. I'm going to take that purple that we used in the outer corner, and just small pencil brush. This is going to go on the outer third of the lower lash line. You might get some fallout with this shade. It is a little bit more powdery than the rest. So just be careful of that. Maybe do your eye makeup first. You guys know I like to live on the edge. <laughs> And then I'm going to take this shade right here. I was worried about this shade because of how it swatched, but it is just fine. Like I told you it would be once you apply it onto the eyelids. So these two shades are going to kind of run the show down here. I'm actually going to take a little bit more gold. Just meet purple. All right, I'm going to do liner and lashes. And I will be back. On a scale of 1 to 100, I give this look a 1,000. <laughs> I'm obsessed with this. I haven't done a colorful look like this in a while. And if I look extra shiny, it's because I am. <laughs> when I do multiple looks in one day, I use only cream makeup so that it's easy to take off. And the powders and creams don't mix weird, but now it's making me shine. So let me powder. But anyways, I mean, this palette is a huge, huge, huge thumbs up for me. I think it did a great job with these dual tone colors. I think you're getting a great formulation for colorful tones. I don't think this palette is going to be for everybody, but you're getting a phenomenal formula, which makes these colors very easy to work with. Whew, I can't stop staring at this. Hold on, let me back out so you can get the full picture. This review overall, huge success. I am literally in love with both of these palettes. Vizzy Art did a phenomenal job with these. These are some of my favorite palettes that they've launched in quite some time. Um, and they're both very, very different. I cannot recommend one over the other for you. It just depends on what you need because for me, I mean, I'm more impressed with the Bijouette just because it's more fun, it's more bright, it's more colorful, the formulations, phenomenal, the curation of the colors are just so well thought out. It's just so well done. So this one is more fun to me. However, at the end of the day, the Cashmere is like more of what I'm going to use because these are my kind of everyday tones. I think both of these fill great voids in my collection. Not really because I have so much, but I feel like both of these have have a place in my collection. I don't feel like I would need to pick one over the other because they're so different and they're both equally as great. So if you're thinking about purchasing these, it just depends on what you think you're going to use, what colors you think you're going to wear more, what colors you already have in your collection. But as far as whether or not these palettes are good, yes, they are great. And I don't say that about all Vizzy Art palettes, though I am a huge fan and I've supported the brand for years. I don't think every palette is amazing, but these two are really up there. I, I don't know. It's been a while since I've ranked my Vizzy Art palettes, but these are definitely, definitely towards the top. I'm, I'm excited about these. <laughs> and I mean, lastly, if you are considering purchasing any of these, I really love to support Vizzy Art just because they are an indie small company with great people behind the brand who truly do listen to feedback. And it's just a brand that I'm overall very excited to support. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thank you guys so much for being subscribed to my channel and liking this video. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.